The nail salon business has skyrocketed in the U.S. with revenue topping eight and a half billion dollars last year. But a bombshell new investigation by the New York Times found Americans' convenient luxury is not so convenient for all. A part one of the report is the most viewed, emailed, tweeted, and shared Times article on Facebook. New York Times reporter Sarah Maslin near uncovered the story, and you join us now. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I got to tell you, if you go to nail salons on a regular basis, once you read this article, and like half of New York does, it's yeah, not just something for rich people. You're going to start to really think about how is it that you're able to pay ten bucks for a manicure, twenty five bucks for a mani pedi. Someone's paying in, in the end, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I say. It's an oxymoron, cheap luxury. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. Right. The fact of the matter is, somebody is bearing the cost of your discount, and in New York City, that someone is always the worker. Right. Uh, Sarah, how did you decide to do this investigation? I know that it took 13 months from the moment that you probably pitched a story to your editor to the moment that we saw it on hmm. the page yesterday. How did you decide to do this? What, what sort of struck you and what was your impetus for it? Well, what actually sparked it was I was getting a pedicure myself at this strange 24-hour salon in Koreatown. And I, it was 10 a.m. and I spoke to the woman and I said, oh, this is such a crazy 24-hour salon. Who does the night shift? She said, I do the night shift. I said, what do you mean? It's the day. She said, I do the day shift too. I hmm. said, explain this to me. And she said, I live in a barracks above the salon. I do the night shift and the day shift. Wow. When people come at night, they shake me awake. I do six days a week, and the seventh day, I go home to my bedside department in Flushing and sleep for 24 hours and come right back. And I said, this is slavery. And then I pitched it to my bosses, and they said, why don't you see if it's bigger? And I came back in a month, and I said, it's bigger. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere. And you said, this is, this is slavery. And what you discovered is not only are there women working for very low wages, but at times for nothing at all. You have to pay for your job in a nail salon, up to $200, sometimes even a little bit more, um, in order to start. Then you work for free till an arbitrary point when the owner decides you're good enough to get paid. One really interesting thing is that the salons outside the New York area, Long Island, maybe up to three hours away, actually populated by workers who live here. Mm. They get on buses in the morning or vans in the morning. They wait on the side of the road like migrant workers, and then they live underneath or behind the salons for a week or a month or maybe in a house in bunk beds, and they see their families about once a month or less. That was one of the interesting details in your piece. We were talking about this earlier. Uh, you mentioned that the Econoline van that picks these people up. Um, <laughs> but I, I, for me, the one line, I think it struck a lot of people and just talking to people and seeing it on social media, is the woman who spilled some polish oh. on a, a, a person of means. She spilled some polish on her shoes. And she, the owner had to pay that patron for the shoes, and they fired her. And she, you had a line there. What she told you was that I'm worth less than this shoe. Mm -hmm. Just talk to our viewers about some of the conditions that these folks have to live in. Sure. Well, what's wild about this experience, right, why it's so jarring, is it's such an intimate act. You're holding hands with a woman mm. across a table. You're looking into her eyes, and people don't see them. Mm -hmm. And I got to see them. They took me into their homes. People would tell me, I live in a one-bedroom in Flushing. And I would go to their house, a one-bedroom split between eight people. Wow. You know, curtains for walls, people living on the floor, uh, one man in a two-bedroom with 24 men. You know, and uh, it, it was really horrific to see, especially with the juxtaposition. They work on Madison Avenue, and they come back to this. And they don't live. They sleep at night and they get up to do their work. There's a whole underground economy of ways to take care of your children because they don't have time. They, these are not the nanny culture that we're talking about. Yeah. These are people who pay other women to raise their babies because they can't see them. There's women who walk around flushing almost like a, like a dog walking service or a Pied Piper mm. trailing other women's children just to take them to school. They don't have time to live. Six days a week, seven days a week they work till the wee hours of the night. Wow. You know, it sort of reminds me almost of stories that you do on migrant farm workers, mm -hmm. similar living conditions. But you think, aren't there regulations? Uh, isn't there, you know, a governing body? A, yeah, watching, you know, watching over this sort of business. What's going on? Who's supposed to be minding this? The Labor Department is, the State Labor Department, and the federal as well. I called the State Labor Department and I asked them, had you ever done a sweep of nail salons? One month later, they did. They had never done one before. It took me nine months to get their database from them of their investigations. I found almost no nail salon investigations, whereas they investigate other industries all the time, restaurants, car washes. It was really wild. Let's talk about the flip side, because we've been talking about the workers' conditions. But I was also intrigued in your article about the owners of these businesses, who tend them themselves to be immigrants from Asia and, in some cases, Latin America. Um, and 
they have a very different perspective. Their perspective is, look, I'm providing some jobs. I have a small business myself. The margins mm -hmm. are not that great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I came here myself with nothing. Look what I've been able to accomplish. This could happen to them if they work really hard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't want to, to sort of, because I know that with this investigation, there are probably going to be some people that are going to be looked at, and they may go out of business, and that's also not something that we necessarily want. But if they're not treating these workers the right way, the state should be looking at that, but I just want to get your sense of the owners and how well, they. Well, that's a smart question. There's a tension, right? Uh, the owners view themselves as heroic. They're hiring an unemployable group of people, really, who don't have papers, you know, who don't speak the language, maybe don't have a skill set that's transferable to America, and they think they're saving their country people and uh, unemployable immigrant class. Um, can't you help these people? the right way? Mm. That would be my question. Wouldn't they, did they say to you, though, that they started out much? There was one woman, I think, who uh, uh, may have started out as a manicurist herself, who mm. eventually came to own her mm -hmm. own salon shop. Many of them did, and they turned the exploitation right back on mm -hmm. the people who mm -hmm. work for them. Very interestingly, the, the industry is 80% Korean-owned, um, and that actually has created a racist hiring structure. Koreans are the most preferred, particularly if they're young and beautiful women. They get paid the most, even in the same salon, with Chinese yeah. below them and Hispanic at the bottom. It, and it also is how they're treated. I had one woman tell me she worked in a Connecticut salon. The Hispanic workers had to be silent for 12 hours a day while everyone else could talk. It's, wow. it's so That's fascinating. A, uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to read part one, read it. Yes. Part two mm -hmm. is already out, right? Yep. Yep. And it takes a look at the chemicals and the health effects on uh, the women that are working at your feet quite often, exactly right? Exactly right. It's fascinating. Tremendous reporting, Sarah. Thank you. Really so well much. done. Yeah, great. Excellent. Sarah Mazalinier, thanks for being with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you.